in this video i'm going to be going over the top 10 must have cards right now in nba 2k 23 my team whether it's for a budget squad an expensive quad a squad and some mid-level squads in the game these are going to be my top 10 must have cards currently in the game some for budget players some for mid-level players and some for those must have expensive cards in the game so starting us off here in the top 10 is going to be dark matter mark eden he's fairly on the expensive side i would say maybe 80k 90k 70k somewhere in that ballpark right now in xbox he'll probably stay around that price maybe he'll go back up a little bit just like ralph samson did because people realize how good mark eden is seven foot four at the center position seven foot seven wingspan but he brings that size that defense that you desperately need against him a new bull a rick smith a yao ming a taco fall all these tall cards in the game you need a guy like mark eden that's going to give you that size that defense that presence and then he's also fairly quick 85 speed 85 acceleration especially with a good coach and a shoe boost you can actually get his speed pretty high up like he can have 91 speed 82 three ball with the doug collins coach who you get for completely free for just completing the all-time piston spotlight challenge and then with the shoe boost you can get him up to a 95 speed and an 86 three ball so a huge upgrade for mark eden in the speed category with a coach and a shoe boost and then also his jump shot i feel like it's pretty knocked down i mean for mark eden card it's really not that bad a lot better than i was expecting his jump shot to be so i do think mark eden right now is a must-have card in my team and then same thing with ralph sampson i feel like i couldn't leave either of these center cards off the list because of how good they are for their price tag they're elite level centers that can compete and hang with the minute bulls the best card in the game the yao mings the rick smiths those really expensive tall centers they can compete and even dominate sometimes with their size their mashing ability i think mark eden's slightly better than ralph sampson just because i think his player models on par with ralph sampson maybe a little bit better player model i feel like he gets rebounds a little bit better he rebounds the ball a little bit better in my opinion but the main difference is i feel like he does have a better jump shot at least for me personally i think i can green a lot more consistently with mark eden's jump shot compared to ralph samson but i think they both got to be in this top 10 i feel like i mean if you're looking for two centers and you don't want to go spend the bank on a you know rick or if you don't have rick smith and you don't want to spend the mt on a yao ming or you don't have manute bull right like after manute bull rick smith and yao ming who are the next best centers in the game mark eden and ralph samson so i think these are the fourth and fifth best centers in the game and you can get them for under 100,000 mt i feel like these are must have center cards in the game if you guys are trying to build a squad and you don't have a manu you don't have a yao you don't have a rick smith these are your go-to center options that's why i think they have to be in this top 10 must have list but going on to the next card here is going to be ak-47 the reason why he's a must have is because once again for his price tag he's going to be able to compete against most shooting guards in the game because of the defense and size he brings to the table six nine at the two seven foot wingspan he's got 98 in every single defensive category almost every single hall of fame defensive badge in the game and then also almost maxed out defensive tendencies all at 99 so this card brings elite level defense and he's tall enough he's got a big enough player model where he can hang against the guys like t-mac kd those tall shooting guards that are amazing offensively like kd that new end game is one of the best cards probably the second best card in the game and he's so good offensively but ak force price of now only about 50,000 mt he's dropped a ton in price as of late and you can pick up this card and be confident that he can do a great job against a kevin durant or a t-mac on the defensive end and then it's not like he's a bad offensive card he's still got pretty good dribble sigs he's got a great jump shot and he's got really good versatility able to play small forward and shooting guard and really do everything on the court at a super high level so i think ak for most people's squads unless you're running a god squad is going to be a must-have card in the game especially for his price tag next card here though is going to be scotty barnes and the reason why he's going to be in this top 10 is because yes he's not on the level of a ben simmons i'm not going to sit here and say he's on the level of a Jokic. he might not even be on the level of an mj a lamello even though i think he could potentially be better than those cards and that's the reason why he's in this top 10 because he's so much cheaper than those cards and i feel like if you're looking for a point guard and you just want some size some defense and maybe a decent jump shot you got like ron or tess scotty barnes Hito Turkoglu, those are like the three main options besides the super expensive point guards. I think Scotty Barnes is the best between Ron Artest 
and uh and uh hito turkaloo just because of his defense he's got a 97 block 97 steal 95 perimeter 93 interior defense he's got a great player model in the game i think he's amazing at going to the basket he's got quick drops off one but just his ability to get to the rim with the steve francis size up the john ball escape and i do really like his new jump shot where he's got the garland base and the scotty barnes upper on very quick timing i think it's a much improved jump shot and yeah, if you guys are looking for a point guard, I mean, Scotty Barnes does really does really everything super well, and I think gotta be in this top 10 for the top 10 must-have cards in the game. Going on to the next card is gonna be Rudy Gay, another card from the Encore set, but I feel like he's also gotta be in this top 10 because if you guys are looking for a top-level shooting guard for super cheap, now we're talking about some more budget must-have cards, like Scotty Barnes, who's what, under 30K? You got Rudy Gay, who's under 30K, both super cheap and amazing at their position. You know, Rudy Gay, six foot eight at the two, seven foot three wingspan. He can hang against most shooting guards because of his size, his player model at that shooting guard position. I would say he's a very similar shooting guard to that invincible Kawhi because he's got a great jump shot on very quick timing. I would say the Rudy Gay base and the Rudy Gay upper on very quick timing is one of the more easy jump shots to green in the game. So if you're maybe just a new player or you, you don't really like fast jump shots, because I know a lot of people wouldn't like a jump shot like Kevin Durant has on his Invincible because it's so fast and it takes a little bit of time to get used to. So Rudy Gay's jump shot, I feel like most people can just pick up this Rudy Gay card, go take a couple shots and green pretty consistently with Rudy Gay because of how easy his jump shot is to time. And then he's also got the Jimmy size up, John Wall escapes, so some pretty good dribble sigs. And then he's also amazing at going to the basket and get some great dunk packages. So all around, Rudy Gay, I think is very similar to a Kawhi Leonard might even be better than Kawhi, probably not, but he's like a budget Kawhi Leonard, so I do think he's got to be a must-have card in the game for most people's budget squads. Talking about another must-have budget card is going to be Dark Matter Carmelo, and this guy is debatably a top five small forward in the game, right? You got Bull Bull, you got Chet, you got Larry Bird. I, I would say that's probably most people's top three small forwards, but then after that, who do you go to? Do you go to KG? Do you go, jo do, do you go to Jonathan Isaac? Do you go to Giannis? Do you go to Scottie Pippen? Do you go to LeBron? Right? Those are like questionable for who's going to be four, five, and six, even seven at that small four position. And I think Karl Malone has an argument to be made to be better than everybody I just said, you know, in that list. Other other than Bull Bull, Chet, and Bird, I think you can, you can make an argument. I don't know if I'd agree with this, but I think you can make an argument for Karl Malone being the fourth best small forward in the game. And he's going to be under 10K because he does everything so well at the small four position he really doesn't have any flaws he's six foot nine at the three seven foot wingspan his stats are pretty much like an invincible you take a look at his animations he's got such a good release it was a way better jump shot than even i was expecting it to be he's got a great jump shot pretty good dribble sigs great dunk packages amazing defensive tendencies I mean, Karl Malone is an amazing budget card, and I think a must-have card for most people's budget squads. And then very similar with Josh Smith, I wanted to have some cheaper budget options in this top 10. So Josh Smith, once again, going to be under 10K, just like Karl Malone. And I think they're very similar at the small four position. They can really do everything on the courts. They got the same kind of player model, same height, same wingspan, same really good all-around stats. You know, same kind of jump shot. They both have the Tim Duncan upper, except that... um. Josh Smith has the Darren Fox base, and Karl Malone does have the Fultz base, and then very similar dribble sigs. Don't they have the exact same sigs? So, I mean, they're very similar cards. Like, Josh Smith, Karl Malone, very similar at the small forward position, but I do think they're both gonna, both gonna be must-have budget small forwards currently in the game. Now, to go into some more expensive cards, I think Taco Fall still gotta be a top 10 must-have card because he's seven foot six at the power forward position. So, if you can build a lineup with Taco at power forward, you know, eight foot two wingspan, one of the best players models in the game and then you pair him up with a guy like mark eden or ralph sampson that's when you can really compete against those god squads when people are running minutes at the four and yao ming at the five or they're running shack at the four and minutes at the five something like that you're going to want to have these two tall power forwards and centers to compete with and that's why i think taco fall for his price tag of only about 150,000 MT, I think is definitely a must-have card in the game currently because of his size and just overall dominance at that power forward position. And then Tracy McGrady also wanted to include him in this top 10 because I wanted to have some more expensive cards in this top 10, but T-Max right now, only about 200,000 MT. Which is kind of crazy for Dark Matter T-Mac, a guy that's still six foot eight at the two, seven foot two wingspan, 
I mean, like, yeah, stats might not be invincible level, but he's still got an elite level jump shot. He's still got great dribble sigs. Like, you're not going to notice too big of a difference between this T-Mac compared to his invincible. Obviously, the invincible is better. But I still think this Radiant Team Mac is definitely worth the price. And I would say must have card, you know, in the game currently. If you're looking for a top level shooting guard, a guy that's going to be elite offensively. And then for the number 10 spot, this is not ranked in order. But just for my last card I want to talk about is actually going to be a bunch of different cards, you know, kind of kind of considered just as free cards. So Bob Nedelecki, I think is a must have free card in the game from that all time spotlight set. So for this 10th spot, I'm just going to name a bunch of a bunch of different free cards that I think you guys should be grinding for right now. So Bob Nedelecki is the first one. Jack Sigma, I think he's a great free card in the game as well. Those are the two must have guys from the all time spotlight set is Bob Nedelecki and Jack Sigma. If you want to get Steven Jackson, you want to get Vucevic, they're great options as well. But if you guys are grinding this set, make sure you're getting Jack Sigma and you're also getting Bob Nedelecki. Another must have free card in the game is going to be Earl Lloyd. Yes, he's a little bit undersized, but he takes one triple threat offline game to get, and he's so elite on the offensive end. So if you're looking for a really good offensive shooting guard, I think Earl Lloyd's going to be your option. And then make sure you guys are still grinding, you know, for Michael Finley. He's a really good shooting guard from the offline game modes. I know it's RNG, so you can't really decide if you're going to get this card. You just got to play and hopefully you get lucky, but six foot seven at the two. And I think he's an elite level free card. So for that 10 spot for the top 10 must have cards in the game, just wanted to mention some free cards like Finley, Earl Lloyd, you know, Jack Sigma, and Bob Nedelecki as some really good must-have free cards in the game. But let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about my top 10? There's obviously so many other must-have cards in the game. These are just in my opinion, just in my opinion, the top 10. But hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.